Hey everybody, welcome to a special weekend edition of No DQ and a video right here on youtube.com slash no DQCW. And as always, no DQ.com. Thanks as always for watching. This is the final episode of No DQ and a video until Raw 1000, of course, which is this coming Monday night. Got a lot of questions here about WWE and uh, looks like even a little bit of TNA here, so let's get right down to it. Hey Aaron, now having done Rock vs. Cena, what do you think would be the biggest strong match WWE could do right now? In my opinion, it would be Cena vs. Undertaker. I agree with you 100%. I think that um, John Cena vs. Undertaker is the absolute biggest match that WWE could do at this point, and it's been one of the biggest matches that they could do over the past several years. Um, they haven't done it yet, um, at least not since... Uh, John Cena first broke into WWE, but now uh, since John Cena's become a major superstar, they haven't had those two cross paths. So um, that would be huge for WrestleMania 29 if that's what WWE is intending to do. I mean, you have John Cena, uh, the poster boy of WWE versus Undertaker, who is um, on the WrestleMania streak. So it's, it's just logic that you put those two guys against each other. Um, will it happen? Who knows? I mean... There's a lot of options WWE has. I mean, uh, in terms of big drawing matches, um, you have Brock Lesnar, so you can do Brock Lesnar versus Undertaker, which um, when, when the, that, that little confrontation happened between uh, Undertaker and Brock Lesnar um, at the UFC event, that generated a ton of buzz. So that right there would be a huge match. Or um, Brock Lesnar versus The Rock one more time, Rock versus Brock two. Um, and then if Steve Austin ends up returning, you have Steve Austin versus CM Punk, Steve Austin versus John Cena, or even Steve Austin versus Randy Orton. So a lot of options. All those matches would be huge, and um, it's just a matter of which direction WWE decides to go in. So uh, we'll see. We'll see where things end up uh, going coming into WrestleMania 29. What are your thoughts on Triple H's new directive on wanting champions to hold the titles for a longer time? I am all for it. I think it's good to protect the titles, and um, I think they can be a little bit more than just props. Um, there was a period when people would uh, buy a pay-per-view or uh, attend a show to see a title defended. Now, of course, the wrestling business has changed. It's not like um, the Bruno San Martino era or uh, the Bob Backlund era, the Hulk Hogan era. Um, you, you have... Um, live television every single week so naturally the titles are going to be defended more often and you're not going to have uh, title reigns as long as they used to be but uh, with that being said you can still um, you know keep the title on a person for at least a couple months to six months um, it kind of got ridiculous a few years back when they were changing the titles on what was seemingly a monthly basis there's no need for that um, during the Attitude Era they used to change titles all the time but that's when there was the competition aspect, and uh, the business just changes. It evolves, and um, I think that six months to a year is a really good uh, length for a title run. So as long as they keep doing that, I think that um, the titles will mean something to some degree. Do you think Triple H will ever have a full-time return? I think SmackDown could really use the boost right now, giving the low attendance since Edge left and, and Orton isn't delivering clearly. I don't see Triple H returning full-time unless it's absolutely necessary, meaning that something catastrophic happens, like John Cena gets hurt, or something like that, or CM Punk gets hurt. Um, as long as Punk is healthy, as long as Cena's healthy, Triple H's focal point is, um, is running the company behind the scenes and, and starting to take over for Vince McMahon and, and do, the, do that aspect of the business. So, um, just, I just don't see it happening unless uh, it, it's really necessary. Hey Aaron, what do you think about Chavo Guerrero going to TNA? I'm not crazy about TNA continuing to hire former WWE talent. I, I really think they need to um, create their own homegrown talent overall. But um, as far as Chavo Guerrero goes, I mean, uh, I think that he's good for the direction TNA's going in if they're trying to reestablish the X Division and um, build that up again. I think Chavo Guerrero is a good hand to have in TNA, and um, he can work with some of the younger talent. So I, I think in this case, it's a good decision to bring him in, but um, 
I would really try to stay away from uh, bringing in former WWE talent if possible, but I, I, I think Chavo Guerrero is a positive for TNA, definitely. Love the show. Do you think Brodus Clay is getting anywhere in WWE? I think he is underrated. I think he's getting somewhere in WWE. I think that um, he's, he's had a successful run overall. I mean, look at it this way. He started off with this monster heel push with Alberto Del Rio, and then uh, he just disappeared for a while. They started hyping up his return, but it kept getting delayed week after week. And finally, he came in with the Funkasaurus gimmick. And quite frankly, I think he's gone over more with the, uh, the Funkasaurus gimmick than he was getting doing the monster heel gimmick. So um, the fact that he's been on t TV every week and um, he's, he's gotten somewhat of a push, he had an undefeated streak for a while, I would label that as a success. So um, I, I think he's doing well. Um, I don't really see him going to the next level with the current gimmick. Now um, they always have the option to turn him heel again and go back to pushing him as a monster. So um, I think the guy's really talented. Um, will he reach the top in WWE? I'm not so sure, but um, I, I think he's doing well overall, and um, I'm sure he's happy with the way things are going, because when you're on TV every week, um, you're making the big bucks. Hey, Aaron, me and my friends come down here in Canada, uh, or me and my friends down here in Canada love the show. I just wanted to ask, what do you think of the Aces and Eights storyline going on in TNA right now, and where do you think they're going to go with it? Please answer in video. I've actually discussed this in previous videos, but I'll go ahead and mention it again, just my overall thoughts. At first, I liked the storyline when um, the Aces and Eights group attacked Sting. But then uh, when they did the whole thing with Hogan being laid out, eh, I mean, I think overall the this, this storyline is a bit low rent. It comes off like an NWO knockoff, and um, it's cheesy with the, um, the Aces and Eights logo on the jackets and the masks. I just, uh, I, I don't, I don't think it's major league, but, um, at least it, it's something that's getting people talking. So in that regard, I would, I would label it a success, uh, a mild success so far because people are interested to see where things go with it and uh, where it's going to lead to. Um, I talked about this before, perhaps it's Jeff Jarrett trying to, uh, regain control of TNA. I mean, uh, that, that seems to be a logical storyline, but, um, you never know where it's going to go. Perhaps they have a different direction that, that they're planning for it. So we'll see. But um, so far, um, I'm cautiously uh, labeling it a success. But we'll, we'll see where things go. In a showdown of Mike skills and nothing else, who would be your pick out of The Rock and Ric Flair? That's a good question, and um, I guess this would be a spoiler if I ever end up doing like a top 25 um, promo promos of all time or guys on the mic. Um, they would definitely be my number one and number two, but I, uh, as far as number one goes, I'm going to have to go with The Rock because The Rock, I don't think anybody can out-talk the guy. I mean, The Rock had to reserve himself a little bit in, that, in the feud with John Cena, so John Cena, when, you know, get booed by everybody. So, you know, The Rock had they did the whole thing with the writing on his forearm, which was just a work right there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, The Rock can can talk like nobody else. But Ric Flair is definitely a close second. I mean, Ric Flair is one of those guys that can talk like nobody else. And, um, yeah, I mean, the two of them are, are in a league of their own, no doubt about it. So um, those, are, those would definitely be number one and number two. But I would give the slight edge to The Rock just because he made so much money just by talking. I mean, that was his thing. Ric Flair was, in terms of the overall package, one could argue Ric Flair being ahead of the rock in a ranking system. But as far as just strictly talking on the mic, I think the rock is the master. I mean, I don't think there'll ever be another guy like the rock. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and A video. Thanks as always for watching. Make sure you subscribe, youtube.com slash no DQ CW. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com this week for Raw 1000 coverage. A lot of stuff going on in WWE right now, and definitely this is going to be a newsworthy week. So make sure you stay tuned to NoDQ. Uh, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash NoDQ, D-O-T-C-O-M. And uh, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash NoDQ, D-O-T-C-O-M. Um, you can even try to add me. I think I'm maxed out, but... Um, 
facebook.com slash Aaron Rift. And uh, stay tuned for more. See you next time.